Although LGBT pride reaches into every area of culture, the Biden administration is sending every signal possible to promote it. On June 1st, American embassies around the world ran the pride flag up the pole, even in countries like the Vatican, where such a display isn't welcome. President Joe Biden also issued a lengthy proclamation recognizing June as Pride Month. Joining me now to discuss this is Roger Severino, F Senior Fellow for Ethics and Public Policy Center and the former Director of the Office of Civil Rights for the Department of Health and Human Services under President Trump. Roger, welcome to the program. Glad to be back on the show. Thank you. Well, tell us why it is that you think the Biden administration thinks it's so important to make these public displays of Pride Month. President Biden is playing to his base, pure and simple. Even though he came on a promise of unity, he's doing things to stoke up the culture wars. He started with his appointments of folks who are really on board with the LGBT agenda from top to bottom. Javier Becerra at HHS is now the HHS secretary. Dr. Rachel Levine, who is very much on the forefront of transgender activists, is now the top doctor at HHS. And you mentioned the flying of the flag everywhere. Uh, including the Vatican, which is a very provocative thing to do. It's really thumbing their nose to try to really push the LGBT agenda as far as possible. They just issued an announcement of all the different executive actions they've been taking in order to further it. And no, no aspect of the federal government is going to be left untouched. They're trying to integrate it into all forms of training, in terms of funding of programs, everywhere they could find a way to put in the letters LGBT, they're going to try to attempt to shoehorn it in. Have you seen a response from the Vatican by that display there? I have not yet. I have not yet. But of course, this is a, an act of provocative uh, display because, of course, Catholic teaching is based on a union of a man and a woman as the only uh, constituent form of marriage. And this is flying in the face of that. And to be so bold about it is a change. I mean, the the Trump administration was very solicitous of religious organizations and their views, and it actually created space for people who have different points of view on questions like marriage. And But from this administration, we're seeing that it's winner take all. Yeah. Unless you buy fully into the cancel culture, woke culture on these issues of human identity, uh, unless you buy in fully, you're going to be excluded. And they're really trying to say by these statements that if you don't get with the program, there will, will be consequences because they're they're now in charge and they're not going to call the shots, especially when it comes to federal programs, when we're talking millions of dollars for faith-based organizations. That's where I expect to see many of the conflicts. We're going to try to impose a LGBT focus that's going to run up against directly religious liberty concerns from adoption and foster care to uh, medical treatments, all of these things where there's federal funding, you're going to find these conflicts between religious liberty and LGBT. Now, we noted, we noted that they are flying the flag at the uh, embassy at the Vatican. Are they flying it everywhere um, in, in the Middle East, for example? Is it in the embassy in Saudi Arabia, for example? Because we know that the, the Saudi Arabian government would not be particularly friendly to the LGBT uh, perspective as well. Do you know if it's being flown there also? Uh, my understanding is the order is widespread. I don't know if they made any exceptions out of cultural sensitivities, and I would hope they would. If they do believe in multiculturalism, then they should practice what they preach and make sure that they don't do things that will go out of their way to offend the cultures of which they are guests. And I don't know, we'll see what they do. But uh, in terms of funding programs and exporting the LGBT cause, I see no breaks. They will be funding organizations to push it, just as like they've done with abortion. The first thing the president did was get rid of the Mexico City policy that prohibited funding of overseas advocacy for abortion. And you're going to see the exact same thing on LGBT issues, I'm sure. It, it is, I think, a little ironic that uh, the left often objects to exporting Western values uh, to the rest of the world. And they, they refer to it sometimes as colonial, colonialization uh, from the West, and, and that's, that's inappropriate. But on, the, it, on this issue in particular, they seem to have uh, no hesitation uh, for the colonialization of the rest of the world because they, they believe in the cause and that that should be exported. Now, you were, of course, in the, in the Trump administration. President Trump was 
No, he was very good on religious freedom issues, but he made public statements in general of his support of many th many of the LGBT movements uh, causes. He had openly gay people in his administration, in his cabinet, in fact. Now, how did the Trump administration treat this month differently than the Biden administration has so far? And I think you have to separate people and the law from the nitty gritty of how these issues come to play. It's not a question about uh, uh, rejecting people's identities or humanity or who they are. It's and the Trump administration was quite tolerant. It's about policies and whether or not policies and laws are going to be forced on people who have a different perspective. And it's about the coercive aspects that President Trump, to his credit, drew a line on. Under the, the Obama administration, they passed a transgender mandate under Obamacare, requiring the provision of sex reassignment surgeries, insurance to cover it, organizations to provide it and do it, even against their best medical judgment and the religious objections. We changed that policy under Trump and said that the definition of sex is based on biology and where it matters most is in healthcare. So many drugs are tested based on the differences between men and women. Sex is a known biological variable that the NIH, National Institutes of Health, requires for research studies. It is crucial to the understanding and advancement of medicine that sex be understood on its true biological basis, not ideology. We rolled back that transgender mandate and President Biden and Javier Becerra and Dr. Rachel Levine had just announced they're gonna ignore all of that. They're gonna ignore court decisions that prohibit enforcement of gender identity policy, and they're going to go ahead and enforce it. This announcement obviated the need for any rulemaking. We went through 150,000 comments plus and responded to all of them before we did roll back the mandate. They think that they are above the law and aren't doing any rulemaking whatsoever. They just announced it in the press release that they're going to be coming for entities that won't comply with their new gender identity mandates. That's a sad thing to see, but it's a steamroller that it has not been slowed down yet. In President Biden's proclamation honoring Pride Month, he went out of his way to note that 14 percent of his appointments so far, his 1,500 appointees is what he mentioned uh, so far, are LGBTQ plus in some way. Um, what do you think of that? What do you, and 14 percent, of course, uh, far exceeds the representation in the general public. Um, what what? What does that mean to you? What's the significance of the fact that they're first they're tracking it, and that's ultimately what the result is in his administration? Yeah, well, personnel is policy. It's it's not really about the identity, how people self identify identify that matters. Uh, we had LGBT people that we had in the Trump administration, as you mentioned. The question is, what are the policies that these people are providing? Uh, are they pursuing an ideology first over the law. And folks like Dr. Rachel Levine, who's been out front on transgender advocacy, and, and I actually met with Levine, where we discussed what is the appropriate medical treatment of minors. And the response of Levine and others in the room was that yes, even minors who have gender dysphoria should be allowed sex reassignment surgery, puberty blocking hormones, that sort of thing. So it's the policy that really, really matters. And these policies are radical. The high court in England just said that minors should not be given puberty blockers because of the serious psychological and physiological impacts that will last them a lifetime. It could lead to sterility. Imagine a 13, 14 year old being able, able to decide they cannot get a tattoo, but they could get these cross sex hormones that could lead to permanent infertility followed up by surgery. Because once you get on that treadmill, it moves you towards the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and ultimately removal of healthy reproductive organs. It's that push that is contrary to science, that's being driven by ideology that I care about, and, and the personnel that are driving it, like Levine, Becerra, and Biden at the top, need to be held accountable for it. We should not be experimenting on our children in this way. And you see states are now pushing back by actually, once they pass the ban, on this sort of treatment in minors. And others are allowing doctors to opt out according to their med medical judgment and conscience to not participate in these surgeries. Again, it's not about the identity of anybody. We have compassion of people who are going through all sorts of gender struggles. It's about forcing people to engage in these surgeries, especially on minors, especially people of faith and religious institutions. 
I think you make a really good point, and, there, and there's two things to drive home here. And you, you mentioned personnel is policy. And the fact that it's the people that are making the difference, not necessarily the identity, but what do they believe? And those things are often, of course, uh, very connected. But it also is driving home the point that elections have consequences. And this is what we discussed uh, last year ad nauseum, at length, right? We tried to make the point that doesn't the personality of the people in office doesn't necessarily mean as much as the ideas and the policies that they represent. And of course, uh, we are seeing those chickens come home to roost in a very serious way uh, early in the Biden administration. Now, we're celebrating, uh, well, the federal government now is celebrating, and many people are celebrating in the month of June, Pride Month. Now, why is it that America gets the 4th of July, which is a day to celebrate our independence, but we have an entire month for uh, the LGBTQ uh, cause? Why is that? Well, because there's a very well-organized, well-funded advocacy apparatus that has been moving to try to push the culture in a particular direction. And we were first told it's really about letting people do what they want in their private lives. That was actually just the nose under the camel's tent. We saw that that moved on to same-sex marriage. And it's really only about the liberty of people to get together. And then it moved from there to sex reassignment surgeries in a blink of an eye. And then the, the flags keep multiplying. The colors on the rainbow flag keep growing and growing. And now we don't know how many pronouns we're going to be required to to keep track of. It, it's it almost been a never ending phenomenon. So because it is well funded, they have now captured by and large much of corporate America. When you hand out so many Lucite awards and you have that carrot, uh, you'll be labeled a hero in some quarters if you you know post the rainbow flag on your business logo, as well as the stick. So they will punish entities that push back. Um, that's what you're seeing that that other play out. Roger Severino, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for tracking this uh, for us and with us. Uh, there are a lot of people around the country who are concerned, and we greatly appreciate your in insight and how we can be thinking and responding to this. Thanks you're for very being welcome. with us.